Hello, my name is Jason Chonko and I am the Applications Marketing Manager for Siglent Technologies North America. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the VSWR for an amplifier. And here is the data sheet for this particular amplifier. This is a Mini Circuits ZFL 1000. Uh, as you can see, it has a clearer indication of both the input and the output port VSWR measurement. For those of you that are new to these types of measurements, VSWR is a way to measure the, or a way to calculate or to describe the impedance match between a, a, a particular circuit element and the circuit of interest. Most of the time, this is going to be 50 ohms or very near 50 ohms. I'm going to be using the SVA1015X Spectrum and Vector Network Analyzer. Uh, this actually has the VNA option or Vector Network Analyzer option, and that's the option that we're going to be using to perform this VSWR test. So, uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we have a, a BN or we have a, an SMA to N type connector here on the tracking generator source uh, input or output. I'm sorry. So the tracking generator source is going to source a particular frequency or a range of frequencies. Those are going to go into the device under test, and then we're going to get a certain amount of reflected energy based on the impedance match. So a larger impedance difference is going to have a larger reflection. Uh, if it's a higher impedance, so if we go from low impedance to high impedance, we'll get larger reflection, and we can measure that ratio of uh, the uh, input versus the output and calculate the VSWR from that. That's also known as the reflection coefficient. So the first thing we're going to do is configure the SVA for uh, VNA. And we're just going to press the mode button and hit vector network analysis. That's going to put the instrument into, VSW, or into VNA mode or vector network analyzer mode. And now we've got the ability to select S11 or S21. In this case, since we're going to be looking at the VSWR, we're going to look at S11. And the format, we've got a number of different formats available. We're going to select SWR. And we've already set our scale and things uh, previously. So you can adjust the reference level as well as the scale per division. And now I'm going to perform a calibration. This is going to remove the effects of the cabling. So we're only going to measure the device under test. Since this is an amplifier, and amplifiers and active devices can be sensitive to impedance differences, uh, we're actually going to insert a 3 dB attenuator, shown here, a 3 dB attenuator into the cabling or into the circuit here. And notice that I'm holding the barrel and I'm rotating the hex. That's going to help that SMA connector last longer. Um, now I'm going to go to calibration, and I'm going to perform one port cal. Now it's going to ask me, please connect the open module. We're just going to leave it open and hit enter. Now it says to short. So I've purchased and already characterized this SMA short. And again, I'm holding the short and I'm rotating the hex connection here for the adapter. This calibration process is going to, again, remove the effects of the attenuator and the cabling, or at least minimize them. In this particular case, we don't have, these are not a fully characterized set of shorts and loads, so it is going to have some error, but it is going to be better than if we were to not perform that calibration. And now we want to connect the load module. So we're going to disconnect that short. And now we've got a load that, this is a 50 ohm load, and we're going to then so easy to do actually. And hit enter. Now we're calibrated. So now we've applied that calibration. There is also a standard calibration for the instrument. You'll see now in our SWR we've got one. Uh, SWR of one means that it matches the impedance that we're expecting. So we're working with a 50 ohm system and we've calibrated with a 50 ohm load and you'll see one to one means we have very little or no reflection. So we've got a a VSWR voltage standing wave ratio of one. So now we can move on to our device under test. This amplifier has an input and an output and you, as you saw previously on the data sheet, we have a VSWR for the input as well as the output at 15 volts. So as you can see, I've got a power supply over here set for 15 volts. I'm going to connect up our positive and negative lead 
And because I have an open port, I'm going to be doing a reflection measurement. I actually want to put a load uh, termination on the output or the opposite side of the port so that I get a, uh, so that it looks as if this is connected to a 50 ohm load. I mean, it is connected to a 50 ohm load, but in order to make an accurate measurement, I want to cap that out the other inputs with terminations that match the impedance so that I can correctly uh, characterize this input without an open port on the outside. So now that I have that connected, I'm going to turn on the 15 volt power supply. And now I can connect the input of the amplifier. So uh, by selecting trace, I can now pull in the, uh, I could select different trace values and different, I can show different traces on the display. I set the average number to 10. And so you could see we've got a, a nice curve here that's very, very close to what we see on the data sheet. I can save that and memory. So I can go data memory. And that's going to, that's going to freeze that particular, that particular uh, input curve for the VSWR. And now let's take a look at the output curve. So I'm simply going to disconnect the cabling from the input and take that termination. And I'm gonna just flip it around to the input. And now we'll measure the VSWR of the output. And again, we do have this set to do averaging. So I am going to it's going to take a few scans to get into shape here. Excellent. So we'll let it settle out here. Um, I could have started just by turning off the averaging and then started back over again. Sorry about that. Um, but now we can see that secondary curve uh, very close again to our first curve. So we have verified that this particular amplifier is meeting the specifications or very, very close to its specifications for this particular measurement of the SWR on the input and the output. Thank you.